Uh, you also asked, what kind of games do I play these days? What do I do in my free time? Uh, well, with five children in the house and my wife working full-time and myself working full-time as a game writer and designer and as an author, I don't have a whole lot of free time. Um, what I do play is a lot of computer games with my kids. We have a Wii, we have an Xbox, we have a PC, and we have a Mac. We also have a DS and a PSP, so we do a lot of computer gaming. We have an iPod Touch and an iPhone as well. Um, however, we also do a lot of gaming around the table, too. We play a lot of Uno and Yahtzee and things like that. My son, Marty, and I, uh, Marty is 11 years old and going to be 12 in November, and he and I played Ra uh, Castle Ravenloft recently, with uh, both just one-on-one, -on -one, and then with a group of his friends last week, and we had a great time with that. Um, Marty took, well, I brought Marty out to Gen Con for the first time this year. Actually, my father flew him out for me, and he just had a wonderful time. He had a, uh, it was like Disneyland for him. It was neat to see the look in his eyes, and to see Gen Con again, fresh through the eyes of one of my kids, which was fantastic. Um, other than that, we don't have a whole lot of regular gaming going on. I try to play pickup games whenever I can, but that generally will mean board games, card games, that kind of thing. Uh, i got a number of nice games at Gen Con I'm looking to play. Uh, we have Lords of Vegas that came out from Mike Selinker and James Ernest, and James was kind enough to teach Marty and I how to play the game there at the show. Um, Ren Fair from uh, Michelle Nephew, which is a transparent, collect uh, transparent non-collectible card game, uh, kind of in the, in the vein of gloom, at least as far as the kind of cards are being used that Keith Baker did for uh, Atlas Games a few years back as well. And uh, just generally looking, Marty's playing a lot of role-playing games as well. I ran a D&D 4th Edition campaign for him and his friends earlier in the year, and then he's tried to pick it up and continue on with it this summer. Um, we played some Monster Apocalypse. I'm playing a little bit of Dust Tactics, which came out of Gen Con as well. And what else? Whatever we can find is available. We, you know, again, we don't have a ton of free time, but uh, what we do have, we like to spend on playing games and things like that. Now, let's see, what's next? What's coming out next? Well, uh, next up we have my next, my first original novel, Immortals, which is coming out from Angry Robot Books. That's going to be shipping into the UK on November 4th, and it'll be available as an ebook worldwide on the same day. That is a science fiction tale about the world's oldest man, Ronan Dooley, who is, the, is a Secret Service agent, and he's been killed. Uh, it exists in a world where you can back up your brain and then when you have some kind of disaster, if you die from old age or whatever, you can have your brain backed up, your mind, your memories backed up into a clone body. So Ronan has had this done more than anybody else. He's almost 200 years old and uh, he wakes up one day in the Immortals Project uh, facility and realizes he's been killed again. And this time, though, he's been murdered and he has to go out and solve his own murder. He has to uh, track down the murderer, figure out who it was, why he did it, and then, of course, it all spirals out of control from there. Um, that's a good science fiction thriller story. If you like that kind of stuff, if you like Blade Runner, or if you like uh, uh, good mysteries, you'll enjoy this one, I think. Uh, after that, we have a book called, uh, or I have a book called Vegas Nights coming out. That's Nights with a K, as in Nights at the Round Table. And I just finished revisions on that. This can be coming out in, I believe, April in the UK and May in the US. And uh, Immortals will be out in, in print in January in the US. Um, and, but Vegas Nights is a story about a couple of young magicians who decide to go to Las Vegas on spring break and see if they can break the bank at the blackjack tables. So it's kind of a combination between uh, Ocean's Eleven and Harry Potter, if you can imagine that. And unfortunately, these, these guys come in and they do pretty well at first. And then they realize that Las Vegas has known about magicians for a long time. And there are a lot of magicians in Las Vegas. And now the boys are in serious trouble. So again, this becomes a bit of a thriller at this point with elements of humor and horror and fantasy tossed in as well. So uh, I hope you like that one. I'm really pretty happy with myself, pretty proud of it. Um, I also just signed on to write a trilogy of novels based on Dust, which is a, role, uh, a property developed by Paulo Parente. I mentioned earlier that I've been playing Dust Tactics. Uh, there was a Dust strategic board game that came out a few years ago from Fantasy Flight. And there's also been an image comic and a few other things, a lot of different models and miniatures made for this. And Paolo is one of my longtime friends. He's a fantastic designer, a fantastic artist from Italy. Uh, he lives out in China now where he's actually working in the factory getting all this stuff out to us so we can get these fantastic games. I'm going to be writing a trilogy on this. Dust is a world in which uh, the Nazis discover alien technology in 1938 and start building walking tanks with it that turn the tide of the war. The Allies capture some of these, manage to come up with their own walking tanks, so we have uh, whole bunches of, of large science fiction-y, diesel-powered type vehicles running around this uh, world in, 19, in the mid-1940s. 
Um, so I'm really looking forward to writing those. That's a lot of fun. I'm actually just in the middle of starting them right now. Uh, I have a number of other things I can't talk about, of course, at the time. You sign these things called, these things called non-disclosure agreements, which means I'm not allowed to speak about any of this until it actually is announced. So once it's announced, you can come by forbeck.com, and I'll be happy to tell you all about it. Uh, you also asked about how to join the industry. That's a very long, tricky question. It's uh, There are a lot of different ways to join the industry. It also depends on whether or not you're talking about tabletop or computer games. But uh, if you're talking about tabletop, which is you know my concentration in a lot of ways, I would say that the best way to join is to start small and start doing some freelance articles for game designers and, and game publishers that already have things out that you enjoy. Maybe write articles for magazines for them. Maybe write a... Uh, a convention adventure for your favorite role-playing game. Then, once you've learned how these things work, once you've established yourself, you can get yourself to work up and doing bigger and bigger projects once you and your publisher have developed a level of trust, trust with each other. Uh, there's also a fantastic way to go about selling things by PDF and print-on-demand nowadays. There's a lot of fantastic things being done in independent game design that otherwise couldn't never see the light of day. Um, there's Fiasco is a new one that just came out this, this summer. It's been pretty well received. There's been a lot of great ones. If you look at the Diana Jones Awards, which is something else I'm involved with, go to dianajonesawards.com or .org, and you'll see all about it. Uh, you'll see a great list of different independent role-playing games and other fantastic board games and computer games. Well, we don't really touch computer games. Board games, uh, uh, people in the gaming industry, all this kind of stuff that you can take a look at and see uh, what we thought as a group were fantastic, excellent things in the gaming industry. Um, so if you want to start out, there are a lot of great ways to do it. Uh, come to conventions, ask questions, network with people, ask me questions directly if you like. You can always email me at matt at forbeck.com. I'm pretty forthcoming with ideas about this. I run seminars on this all the time at different shows, different conventions, especially Gen Con. Um, if you want to get involved in the computer game industry, it's a little bit trickier, but uh, I would suggest joining the I I International Game Developers Association, the IGDA, and join your local chapter if you can find it. Go to igda.org. And they also have special interest groups based upon what kind of uh, field you want to go into. If you want to go into writing, if you want to go into design, if you want to go into arts, if you want to go into programming, if you want to go into management, whatever. They can help you out with this kind of stuff. It's a wonderful resource and a wonderful place to start. Uh, it's very cheap for students to join, and actually a lot of the mailing lists are free to join. Uh, you don't even have to be a member of the IGDA to be able to be a part of it. But I do recommend if you're getting into the industry, joining it. It's a wonderful organization that does a lot of great good for the people who are involved. Um, if you have any specific questions about this kind of stuff, I'd be happy to help you out in the future. And Wynn, hey, thank you for uh, taking the time to come up with these interview questions for me. I really enjoyed doing this, and hopefully we'll get a chance to do it again sometime soon. Take care.